Welcome to Mental Health Monday. We're so glad that you've joined us tonight. And I'm so pleased to have my friend, Megan Kohler, who is a licensed professional counselor. And she is joining us again tonight to talk about anxiety and how it affects us. Welcome, Megan. Hi, my name is Megan Kohler. I'm a licensed professional counselor here in the Boise area, and I own Kohler Counseling. I was honored to be asked to speak to everyone today about mental health. It's so incredibly important that we're addressing our mental health. It's just as important as our physical health. We're all focusing really intensely on our physical health, and I, I think we should. Um, we're washing our hands. We're making sure that we are staying at appropriate distance. We're making sure we are wearing masks, gloves. Maybe some of our behaviors are changing. All of those things are really great and they keep our physical body healthy. But I also think we should place a lot of focus on our mental health as well. So today I'll be talking a little bit about some components of our mental health that should be addressed. And um, hopefully I'll be able to add some tools to your toolbox for you because everybody seems to be struggling a little bit with our mental health and I wanna make sure that we're all being as um, healthy as we possibly can be. So. Um, I think the very first thing that needs to be addressed is the stigma with mental health. A lot of people feel like speaking out or addressing their personal mental health issues, being vulnerable about that, is pretty scary. And it's because we're worried we're going to be judged or shamed. Somehow it's a personal reflection um, on ourselves in, in a negative way. And I'm here to say that that's not true at all. It doesn't matter who you are, it doesn't matter how successful you are, um, how smart you are, how um, great of a support system you have. Mental health is something that impacts everybody. Um, and for some, it's much more significant than others. And if we don't address the stigma of mental health, this is what happens. We have people who don't ask for help because of the fear of the shame and um, the guilt and any of the backlash that may happen. So we have fewer people speaking out and asking for help. And then we also have individuals who are not the best supporters of individuals who have mental health issues. So an example, if I have a preconceived notion about mental health issues and somehow I feel like that makes an individual less than or weak, I'm not going to be the best supporter of somebody who is struggling. So overall, if we could just collectively dismantle that mental health stigma, it would be so beneficial for us. I, I can't really talk about any, any mental health issues without addressing that stigma because it really does. It hinders, it hinders a lot of healing from individuals. So two types of mental health issues I'd like to address today, anxiety and depression. The reason being is a lot of us are familiar with the concept, at least. Some of us have maybe struggled um, short or long-term battles with anxiety and depression. And I'm also personally seeing a lot of anxiety and depression um, amongst my clients and in my practice. It makes sense, though. Right now, we're dealing with a lot of unknowns, and so that really triggers a lot of anxiety. And we're also dealing with a lot of grief and sadness and frustration, and that can really trigger a lot of depression. So it's not really a mystery why we are struggling with anxiety and depression during this time of a pandemic. For some people, they don't recognize that they are struggling with anxiety or they are struggling with depression. So I've got a list here of some symptoms of anxiety and depression, and you'll notice that some of the symptoms overlap. Um, some of them are similar to anxiety as well as depression, and that's just sort of the nature of the diagnosis. So for anxiety, a lot of people have sleep issues. They're quick to get angry. They can't relax. They can't um, have their mind just calm down. They oftentimes deal with a lot of stomach issues. They're struggling with digestion problems, dizziness, tightness in chest, although that can be an indicator of something else that's pretty serious. So make sure that you are definitely checking up with your um, family practice doctor or some type of medical professional in that. Um, exhaustion, unable to focus, forgetful, headaches, change in appetite, becoming obsessed with things that they're fearful of, but also sometimes people just become obsessed with really random things when they're feeling anxious. It, it just doesn't really matter what it is. Um, 
And then struggling to find joy. That's really kind of an important piece there. They're really just struggling to find the joy in their normal day-to-day activities. Depression, oftentimes people experience low energy sleep issues, so that was also addressed in anxiety. Anger issues, headaches, they can't finish product projects or meet deadlines. They're feeling very down on themselves. There's a lot of self-esteem issues that revolve around depression. Change in appetite, feeling disconnected from others, no longer passionate about the things that they were passionate about. And then lastly, again, that struggling to find joy. I think that that's really important. Um, this by no means is um, a full list of issues that you will find under the category of anxiety and depression, but I think it's important that we at least list a few because for some of us, we may not be aware that we are struggling with anxiety or depression or both. Um, and so I just wanted to make sure I listed off a few things there. One thing that can be helpful if you are experiencing anxiety or depression or some other type of mental health issue is really kind of reframing mentally some of our thoughts around what is currently happening. So I've talked a lot um, with my clients about this concept of flexible thinking. So we are being forced to do things differently, and sometimes that can be really difficult. And so if we're able to be more flexible in our thinking and possibly um, adapt to things based on what we are personally um, valuing and what works for ourselves or our family versus what we think other people want us to do or what we think other people are doing, we are in a better bet. We're in a better situation. So here's an example. I see a lot of women in my practice, and a lot of them are mothers. And there's just a collective struggle with doing all the things. So homeschooling the children, making sure the house is in order. Many of them are working at least in some degree outside of the home, but now they're being forced to work inside the home. There's just a lot going on, and it's really, really hard to do all of it. And there's been a lot of shame and stress and judgment and anxiety revolving around making sure that our kids are doing all their homework and everything is running as it was previously. But that flexible thinking may be helpful. It might just be that you just need to let go of some things, or maybe you have a day where the kids watch a lot of TV so that you can get some stuff done, And collectively for the family, maybe it's okay. Maybe kids are very stressed about the homeschooling situation. And if you just say that they don't have to do all of it, maybe half of it, or in a different way they are able to cover an assignment or a a subject, it might be helpful for the collective family to be flexible with that. Focus on the rhythm of the family and make sure that everybody is being healthy The most important thing that you can do for your household is make sure that it is calm, make sure it feels safe, and make sure that there's some sort of normalcy to it. So just focus on those things and maybe let go of a lot of other preconceived notions or pressures that don't matter. That flexible thinking is important right now. The other thing I talk to my clients a lot about is embracing the end. A lot of us feel lots of different emotions right now all at once. And it can be really stressful to force ourselves to commit to one of those feelings. So some people are feeling really grateful that their family is healthy and they're able to have some flexibility with their job so they're able to be home with the kids and work. And they're very stressed that they're having to work and their kids are driving them crazy and all you want to do is have a break and then you feel guilty about feeling that way. I'm here to tell you it's okay to feel both of those things. Embrace the and. You can be grateful and stressed at the same time. You do not have to commit to one or the other. It's it's a waste of mental energy and it ends up being just a lot of guilt and shame onto us that we're placing on ourselves. You can be frustrated at the current situation of making sure that you have to social distance and and make sure that um, everybody is being safe and you can still understand the importance of it and make it work within your family. The, The and, the embracing the and can be really, really helpful right now. So... 
for some coping skills, some specific ones. Not everybody will resonate with some of these, but I do think that I've got a decent enough list here that you might be able to find um, one that really speaks to you. Um, focus on what has not changed. I think that's important. We're hyper-focused on what has changed, and that's completely understandable, but it may be helpful to focus on what has not changed so that your kind of familiar surroundings and sense of normal can stay intact. Though we've talked about the flexible thinking, but sometimes that's just really something that we need to embrace when we are forced to make some major changes. Um, be outside. We... I think we can be incredibly grateful that this pandemic hit at this time of year so that we are able to be outside and enjoy the sunshine and the weather. There's a lot of science that backs the benefits of being outside and getting sunshine and feeling the ground under our bare feet. It's a really strong sense of grounding and it can really calm our nervous systems if we are feeling incredibly anxious. Create some sort of daily rhythm. I like to say daily rhythm instead of schedule because I feel like rhythm <laughs> sounds a little less rigid. So if there's some sort of family household rhythm that you want to adopt, that would be great. Like a general sense of when everybody wakes up, a general sense of when everybody eats breakfast, a general sense of when everybody does their schoolwork or you go off to do your work, whatever it may be. Um, a daily rhythm can be helpful. It gives us a sense of security with, with everything feeling really um, just abnormal. It can be really helpful. Um, self-care. Self-care. I like to use self-care in quotes. Oftentimes people will link self-care with some sort of product that you have to buy or some type of service that's super expensive that you need to buy. And I'm here to say that self-care is completely free and it can be utilized by anyone. Um, if you want to buy something that's expensive that's pertaining to your self-care, that's wonderful. But I really encourage everybody to look around their home and their immediate surroundings and find some things, little things, that you really, really enjoy and really pay attention to it. So maybe you have a favorite um, mug and you're drinking coffee out of it in the morning. It's one of your favorites. The coffee is actually hot. You haven't microwaved it like five times yet in order to finish it. That might be something that you thoroughly enjoy, but if you're not present to it, you don't have time to enjoy it. So I'm encouraging you in these small moments of self-care to really revel in those moments and enjoy the little things. Um, going for walks can be forms of self-care. Doing some type of art project that you enjoy doing, self-care. Watching a ton of shows on Netflix can be considered self-care. Do whatever it is that really resonates with you and something that you enjoy. Um, and on to um, kind of to carry through with that, just finding the little things that make you happy and bring you joy are really, really important right now. Um, listen to your body and acknowledge if it needs rest. A lot of us are feeling very tired right now. And the reason being is because we're kind of in this constant state of a stress response. And that can make us really tired. And so a lot of people will place a lot of judgment on themselves and say, I shouldn't be this tired. I'm not even doing anything. It doesn't matter. You are doing something. There's a lot of stress going on around you. And it's important to honor those messages that your body is sending you. And so you may need to take a nap. You may need to take breaks throughout the day. Or if you have a day where you're extra tired, that's okay. We, we don't need to um, place any type of blame or sit and question it too much. Sometimes we just need a break and that is all right. And then the other thing that's super important is socializing. We still can socialize. We still can um, socialize through social dis social distancing, and we can also socialize through technology. It's very important that we engage in human contact, whether it be through the screen or in person. Um, we cannot forget how important that is. Human beings are social creatures, and we need to make sure that we are engaging with others. That's really important. Um, the last thing that I want to add is ask for help. If you need help, ask for help. 
it's really important that we all understand that we are we are not alone. It may feel like we are alone right now. We may feel very alone and isolated, but we are not. And it's really important that we ask for help if we need it. And to piggyback on that, a great website that I always tell everybody um, to go to if they are wanting to shop around for a mental health professional is the website psychologytoday.com. This is a great website where you can plug in your location, the type of clinician that you want to see. Um, you can click on the, the types of issues that you're struggling with, the types of insurance that you have, all of it, and it'll narrow down your search to the types of mental health professionals that meet your criteria. And most of us in the field right now are seeing clients online, so we're able to maintain our safety as well as yours. And I have to say that a lot of my clients really love the convenience of online video counseling because there's just not a lot of setup. It's really quite easy. They can see their therapist from the comfort of their own home, and it really does break down a lot of barriers um, so that individuals can seek out help from a mental health professional with ease. So I really do encourage you to reach out to a mental health professional, whether it be me or somebody on Psychology Today. It can be for little things or big things. It doesn't matter. Seeing a mental health professional is beneficial regardless. And overall, the purpose of this talk today and the focus that Cathedral of the Rockies is wanting to make is that mental health is important and we all care about it and we care about you. And so if you're needing some help or guidance, please reach out to a mental health professional so that you can make sure that your physical health and your mental health are being tended to.